So hello and welcome to back to another video on Smart Ass. So recently I've been thinking a lot about times people were being transphobic in my life but didn't quite realise it. And I kind of realised that it wasn't necessarily because they, they were trying to hurt me. It was mostly because of, you know, lack of knowledge and just, you know, general insensitivity. And I thought I'd make a video about this because I don't think most people that are being trans or homophobic you know, want to be that, so obviously some do. So I thought it would be a good idea to make a video on things people don't realize are transphobic. Usually when I tell people they're being insensitive, they tell me that I'm just being, you know, vulnerable and uh, super, you know, overly sensitive. But at the end of the day, if you say something to somebody and it ends up hurting them, then it's not, not just them being insensitive, it's also you having said something that obviously wasn't right. Number one is asking people what their real name is. Uh, this has happened to me on multiple occasions. The thing is, my real name is what I just told you, which is why I told you that name. If I tell you a name, just go with it. Um, my dead name, which you're obviously referring to, is none of your business, and the reason why I call it a dead name is because I don't want to go by that anymore, not because I didn't like the name itself, but because I have bad memories with that name. Um, that name was a huge dysphoria trigger uh, for years of my life, and I don't feel the need to share it with you, and you, sorry to say, don't have the right to ask. Um, referring to my transition as me choosing to be trans, um, I didn't choose to be trans just as much as you didn't choose to have, you know, green eyes or your specific uh, skin tone. It, it's not something I chose um, because I don't think anybody in their right mind would choose to go through the journey I and other trans people have to go through. For some reason people still say stuff like that but it's just something that really rubbed me off the wrong way because I didn't, I really didn't choose this uh, and I don't see why using the right vocabulary like I transitioned or I came out, I don't see how that is an issue um, because at the end of the day, you know, this again comes down to being sensitive about certain topics. Number three is generalizing trans people. Now what I mean by that is obviously we all go through uh, a similar process when it comes to transitioning. But um, everybody's transitioning process is different and just because you know how a certain person transitioned, that does not mean you know what transitioning is like or what a trans person goes through. I was in a situation and this person actually gave me permission to use that and they said that they are under the impression that nowadays trans is becoming a trend and it's getting more and more easy for, for people who identify themselves as trans to go through all the medical process without like proper like counselling and shit. Um, and while that might be the case in some countries, just because you heard about one case that or a couple of a handful that does not mean that that is the case with every trans person. Trans rights are different in every country. Um, at the end of the day, we, we are individuals and our journeys are, whilst very similar at first sight, so different when you, you know, look further into it. That by itself might not be transphobic, but uh, it usually, you usually spiral into something that might be transphobic very quickly when you start generalizing. Um, as, as it is with, you know, I think any um, group of people, uh, you shouldn't generalize it them because you end up saying things that are either hurtful or just wrong. Number four is something that hasn't happened happened to me in a long time, but it did once happen to me, saying that I looked better before I transitioned. Um, somebody always told me that I looked so much like my, my blonde long hair was so beautiful. I'm not doing this to look better for you. I'm doing this because I need to do it for myself. Um, you saying that will just, you know, make me not like you. So really all you're doing is pushing yourself away from me. Frankly, I transitioned because 
I was so unhappy in my skin every time I saw myself with long hair, I didn't see myself. So, uh, telling me that I look better that way just, you know, tells me that you liked somebody I wasn't. So, that really just shows me you don't really know me. Number five is something really weird, which is fetishizing or sexualizing trans people. Um, and whilst obviously it's never wrong to, you know, find a trans person attractive, I've had people tell me that they always wanted to try to have sex with a trans person or uh, even worse things. And it's like, I don't want to be that object. Especially when it comes to sexualizing a trans person, I think it's really difficult because most people, most trans people have really difficult times with their bodies and especially, you know, their, their sexual organs. Marginalizing them to the point where it, all that matters really is their, their, their sexual organs uh, is something that I reckon for most trans people would be absolutely devastating. The thing I'm most insecure about, so I don't want to be objectified just by that. Um, because frankly, that's the last thing I want people to think about when they think about me. So fetishizing trans people is in my opinion horrible because it's completely ignoring all of their feelings um, towards their own body. Number six is um, something that people used to say to me. Obviously it doesn't happen anymore because I just transitioned quite a long time ago. Um, telling me that you won't be able to see me that way. Uh, okay, lovely. So I just came out to you, told you that I am a guy, and you tell me you can't see me that way. What, what the fuck does that mean? I'm not a different person because of that. Um, and I don't want you to see me a certain way. It's me telling you who I am. Uh, it's not your decision to see me that way. Um, number seven is or also something that I've been told in the past, telling me that you don't want to lie about me. I came out to this person and they said, well, what if I, what do I do if we go to go into a store together? I can't tell them that you're a boy, that would be lying. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> frankly, it's just not, it's not lying. Um, and if I ask you to refer to me in a certain way, and you refuse to do it because you don't want to be lying, then that is just blatantly being transphobic, to be honest with you. Obviously, it can happen that you mess up, that you say something you didn't want to say, and that's fine. That's not what I'm referring to. My point is, you're not lying when using the, my preferred pronouns, because it's just pronouns. It's not lying. It's who I am. When I was younger, I used to, you know, try to justify those comments and try to be more sensitive in their way, kind of be like, but I have to understand how difficult is it is for them. But as I'm getting older, I'm starting to realize that is just not true. It's just like me trying to please them in a certain way. Uh, I don't have to justify my own identity or my own pronouns because they're mine and you don't get to choose them. <laughs> and number eight is a lovely one. I'm not being transphobic, but usually whenever you start a sentence like that, you are being that very thing that you just said you weren't being. Um, because it is just like this pre-phrase you use to excuse an insult. They're already apologizing for what they're saying. If it sounds transphobic, it most probably is transphobic. Um, so obviously this was quite a serious video, but I feel like for some reason, there's still a lot of awareness to be spread. So if you watched until this point, thank you. Maybe consider, you know, if, if you did any of those things previously, maybe consider uh, changing your habits. See you all next time and take care.